Okay. We're, uh, we're very much involved in IP transformation and enabling broadband in both fixed and mobile networks worldwide. So uh, helping the carriers to deliver new innovative services, particularly broadband services to both residential and business customers. Yes, I mean, very much um, transformation is, is one aspect, but evolution is probably even more important than migration. What, what we're seeing with, uh, with carriers, particularly in Latin America, a lot of uh, TDM circuit infrastructure, a lot of 2G mobile networks today, and uh, a lot of traditional circuit-based technologies. So enabling them to migrate their technologies towards IP and Ethernet technologies to enable more broadband services for both business and residential is key. Obviously, they... Uh, they don't want to invest in brand new technologies and have to uh, have to get rid of all their existing infrastructure. Helping them leverage what they've already got in their infrastructure is very important. Um, I think I think there's more opportunity certainly in mobile carriers in in emerging markets. Um, we're seeing a, a, a very strong um, push for uh, for more mobile handsets and mo mobile services in emerging markets, where perhaps some of the more mature markets the expectations are more related to uh, to fixed services and higher bandwidth residential services. Yes, I, I think one of the most important things is going to be getting the uh, getting the, uh, the the mobile backhaul networks and the transport networks voice ready. Um, today, most of the voice traffic is carried on TDM networks, um, traditional 2G, and one of the things we're working with a lot of carriers to help them do is move that transport, that backhaul network to IP, but be able to carry the 2G and the new 3G traffic and to start enabling text messaging, video applications, um, and to carry that traffic in a very reliable and very deterministic way so that the, uh, the user expectations for reliability and, uh, and response time on things like voice services are, are maintained. That, that's certainly a common approach, not just in emerging markets, but in mature markets as well. I, I think the reality is that the 2G networks are not going to go away. 3G networks will happen, licenses will be granted, new 3G applications and, and handsets will come out, and new applications will be delivered. But we're in the business of helping carriers build networks that enable them to deliver both, because they can't get rid of the 2G networks, but they want the new 3G applications as well. So the, the transport networks have to be enabled to carry both types of traffic, and, and, and really uh, IP is a key technology to enable that. Uh, I think we've got considerable, uh, considerable learning experience from from Europe as, as well as from North America with uh, with 3G services. Um, I think one of the key things is the reliability of the IP network is paramount. It's the number one priority because it's carrying all of the voice revenue. So while the the data services and the new IP applications are, are great, the business is still being run on the voice revenues. The IP network has to be at least as reliable as the existing 2G TDM networks. How does that? How do we accomplish that? Uh, we accomplish that through uh, through network engineering, through uh, through understanding the requirements um, and expectations of both the uh, the users and the carriers, and ensuring that IP products are built for carrying voice applications, not just for carrying in best effort internet traffic, which is what most routers have been used for traditionally. Uh, I, I would expect that the, that, that the initial handsets, until the volumes are really there, the, the handsets will probably be more expensive. Um, but I think as the volumes increase with 3G handsets, um, things like the iPhone we've already seen, prices have come down in just a few months since the launch in, in North America and, uh, and, in, and in Europe. So I, I think, I think there'll, there'll be considerable price pressure from, uh, from users to, uh, to get the handsets cheaper. I, I think for, from a carrier's perspective, the key is is going to be to to make sure that they can get the maximum out of their uh, their network infrastructure and one of the things we're seeing is a, a lot of carriers particularly in Latin America but we've seen the same thing in Europe wanting to use the same infrastructure for both mobile transport and for fixed transport so leveraging the uh, the the assets that they're building the networks they're building to carry both residential business and mobile traffic uh, rather than having to build separate networks for each of those. That can be done? Absolutely. Today, today many carriers are doing that and more and more RFPs that we're seeing and discussions that we're having with carriers, particularly in, in emerging markets like Latin America, that's, that's what they're trying to do. 
Um, I, th I think it's common across the board. Um, one, one that we just uh, announced a partnership with yesterday was Brazil Telecom, um, where we're providing IPMPLS equipment, and, and again, the intent is to use that for both residential and mobile services, as, as well as business services. So I think we're we're seeing um, we're seeing some some commonality between uh, what's happening in the Latin America market. Um, we have other carriers, Canteve in Venezuela, another example where they're uh, they're delivering both business and residential services over a common IP infrastructure. Um, Antel in Uruguay, an, another example where um, mainly driven by mobile, but also looking to to leverage the same IP infrastructure for uh, for fixed services. I, I don't think it's driven by one particular application. We're, we're seeing different drivers in different markets and with different carriers. Um, certainly in, in some markets, IPTV is a driver. Clearly in Brazil, that's just still a, a, a very new application. Um, certainly 3G mobile applications um, is, is another driver. Um, business to business connectivity services that traditionally have been um, circuit based leased lines over, over SDH. We're starting to see that move to IP and Ethernet as well. So I don't think it's one particular application or one particular set of customers, what we're seeing with the carriers is looking to build one network to support all of their applications and all of their customer base for fixed services.